Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about role play games and today we're going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we met this old man who is the boat shop caretaker who also seems to be a bit senile and thinks he's running a pasta shop and he thinks we're his children. It's weird, but in this episode we're going to go ahead and see what he saw because apparently he witnessed the murder right in front of him. I forget the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night, yep. It was after midnight, but okay. Then I heard this BANG! So I looked outside, and I heard another one. BANG! A little while later, this boat comes back. And a young man walked by my window here. He was muttering something to himself, yup. What did he say? Uh, yep. I forgot. I'll remember about tomorrow by court time, I promise. We need to know earlier than that. You know what? Uh, old Terry was just here. Terry? Uh, yep, that kid next door. He always used to make him cry, remember? He was wearing this tattered old coat. Got himself some whiskers going on his face. Must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. It comes and tells me to come down to the court tomorrow. Really? Somehow I don't think we're going to get much useful information about this guy. Or about out of this guy. Maya, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Oh wait, I had one more question. Huh? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget DL6! Squawk! Huh? What did she just say, Nick? One more time, Polly. Don't forget DL6! Squawk! What? The DL6 incident? Hey, mister. I, I'm dead. It's getting weird. Who is this old guy? How would that bird Polly... What would that, why would that bird Polly know about DL6? I have to figure out who that old man is. Oh. What? He locked the door from the other side. Who could that old man be? I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe. Things are heating up, folks. December 26th, Police Department, Criminal Affairs. Hey pal, long time no see. You don't look so happy. What's wrong this time? Actually, we want to ask you something. Yeah? Boat Caretaker. You know the boat rental shop down at Ford Lake? Oh yeah! The old man who runs it is appearing as a witness in court tomorrow, right? Huh? How'd you- Hmm. <clears throat> that was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who that old man is, Detective? Actually, I don't. He's a bit of an odd bird. I haven't been able to get a straight answer out of him. I decided first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Miss Lotta Hart yesterday. As for who he is, we have absolutely no idea. Hmm, sounds suspicious. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please help us. Huh? We need to know about the DL6 incident. That was when Edgeworth's father died. Can't help but think that it has something to do with this current case. To tell you the truth, I don't know much about a DL6 either. Mr. Edgeworth will bait us from reading the file. So, I'm afraid I can't show the, them to you either, pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow that the DL6 incident is related to this case, well, I guess I'd consider opening the file up. Well, thanks to the parrot over here, we do have a pretty solid connection. What's that? A parrot? The old man at the boat rental shop's parrot. The parrot knew about that incident. That incident? DL6. Wh what? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget, DL6! Squawk! Huh? Pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. 
Yeah, how would the, how would that old man, yeah, but how would that old man know about the DL6 incident? Wait, what if, what if that old man was connected to DL6? Nick, you think he might be? I get you. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. Though, there is the station's records room. I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. Alright, way to go, Detective Gumshoe. Okay, Nick, to the records room. Guess it's time we face Edgeworth's past. December 26th, Police Department Records Room. Wow, it's amazingly dusty. Ten years of files and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find the DL6 stuff quick. Fifteen years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. We were almost through with fourth grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6? Nick, I found out where the file is. Uh, oh, thanks. Just let me know what you want to know and uh, about DL DL6 incident. I'll go get the right file. The records room. Here are the files collected of case reports. There's quite a large volume of reports here. Wow, these are all case reports? Yeah, it's like a graveyard of police cases. I guess my sister's case report is in here too. Quietly gathering dust. Back thing the same. There are shelves stuffed with case files in the back of the room, too. Forgotten cases rotting away for eternity. Nick, let's get what we need and get out of here. All this dust is getting to me. This cabinet is where they keep evidence for the current cases. Some of the things are obviously murder weapons. Others are who knows what. Most of it just looks like random junk. Nick, what do you think this clothespin is for? Don't touch that. It's evidence. Case summary. Well, first I have to get a handle on the main facts, like a summary. Right. Summary, summary, found it. Here you go. December 28th, 2001. That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. So in two days, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district court. What? Is this the same district court where we're holding the trial now? Looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2 o'clock p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed and all of the lights went out. Wow, that was some earthquake. At the time, there were three people trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours! That would be scary like that in the dark. There was a lack of oxygen in the elevator, and the survivors were unconscious. The survivors? One of the three in the elevator had been shot in the heart. That was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? He said that his father was shot before his very eyes. So Miles Edgeworth was one of those other passengers in that elevator. It would have been horrifying for a nine-year-old. You have data on the victim, Edgeworth's father? Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim, here, found it. Gregory Edgeworth, or er, Greg, Gregory Edgeworth, 35, defense attorney. If you were still alive, he'd be 50. He had lost that day's case in court and got in the elevator with his son, Miles. Miles? Miles Edgeworth, of course. So he was on the elevator with his father. From the angle of the bullet and the other evidence, it could not have been a suicide. A murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired twice. Where have I heard that before? Huh, sounds just like this current case. What's going on here? Got any data on the suspect in there? Hmm, that would be the guy that my mom arrested. Hold on, this is it. The man arrested as a suspect in DL6 was... Yanni Yogi? He was a clerk in the court, apparently. 
so he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, then he had to have done it. But he was found innocent, thanks to his defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. Hammond, the victim in our current case. Right. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen deprived, so much so he had brain damage, he lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Hmm, where could Yogi have gone to, I wonder? He may be closer than we think. I guess I know generally what happened in DL6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edgeworth. Nick, are we going to take the whole file? There's too much. We'll never get it out. You're right. How about we just take what we think we'll need? DL6 case file added to the court record. Right. That's probably all we'll be able to find here. Now all that's left is the trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad will do testifying in court.